we just haven't it hasn't gotten good yet <laughs> yeah same here there was um a couple days ago literally this line which was ridiculous that showed pennsylvania because we're i'm in upstate new york so rochester and it showed pennsylvania which is our bordering state having 80 degree weather and we were having 30 degree weather it was like this curtain of you don't get spring yet <laughs> <laughs> you are not the chosen ones. <laughs> you are not the chosen ones, right? Yeah, that just missed us. We thought we were going to get that actually, but it we were chosen, so our weather we was a chosen. bit better. Yeah, it wasn't 80. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> So I appreciate, thank you so much for coming on and just sharing your wisdom because I feel like a lot of our viewers right now are in this range of toddlerhood to mm -hmm. school age, like elementary. And it's that window of wanting independence and wanting the behavioral problems start kicking in. And there's this confusion of, uh, there's so much information on how to parent, how you have input from your parents, which they came from that authoritarian kind of mindset that you listen, you obey. And then you have um, tons of other different strategies that you try implementing, but I'm hoping you can help guide us to good strategies that we can like practice because absolutely, it's so confusing. <laughs> I, I know. And that's exactly where I started. And it, it's Being part confused. of <laughs> confused, triggered, you name it. Uh, yeah. And so that's, that's one reason why I got into this work is because I needed me and I yeah. couldn't find me. So I became me, <laughs> if that makes <laughs> sense. And so I was, I was looking for a lot of strategies for myself just to survive. Right. And while I was doing that, I was sharing. And before I knew it, I was a certified life coach and had my- How did that happen? How so, <laughs> yeah, give a little bit of background to, you know, you become a mom and how does that kind of evolve into, because everyone who is just tuning in and watching, so Allison Smith is a parenting coach. And before you reached out to me, I didn't know that was like a real life thing, like a career that you could choose to- a lot of people don't. You hear no. life coaching, but parenting coaching seems so much more important to me. <laughs> Some people don't even know what life coaching is. They just kind of have this vague thing of like Tony Robbins. Yeah, you know, that's exactly that's right. I know, right? Right. Um, yeah. So I actually have to back up a little bit. And I started out as a teacher. I was, I was. Who, what did you teach? I used to teach as well. Yeah, elementary school. Mostly. Okay. Um, I did some admin. I did some union work. Um, I taught some middle school, which um, blood pressure, no, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my world. High school, yeah. high school was my jam. And I taught middle school one year. And I told, I, I had an eye twitch, Allison, that developed. <laughs> And I, I got rosation and hot red ears. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's, it's a new yeah. world. It's a new it world. It takes a special person. You know, I yeah. love, I love teens one-on-one -on -one and maybe mm. even like two or three, uh, but like as a little gaggle, but as a, uh, a group, as a mob, I don't do as well. I find I, I really connect with others' emotions. in any given hour. <laughs> and so right. I would walk into a room and just be hit with it. And I would be so confused <laughs> and, and stressed and frustrated. Yeah, not my thing either. Um, but I did it for a little while because I figured, you know what, I've invested years of my education yeah. and my life and it's a career and it's solid and it's permanent and it's uh, safe and it's what I'm supposed to do, blah, 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 blah. But it just wasn't the right fit. I love teaching. I love kids. I love, I love learning and just that experience and seeing others learn. I love that. But I wasn't able to teach what I was really passionate about, which was personal growth. Oh, uh, you speaking right to my heart. Yeah. <laughs> personal development. But yeah. I love it because 
I was always, I was always the girlfriend who would never let it go. Why do you have to keep talking about it? Uh, just chill out, just go with the flow. And I was like, I need to know why. Yeah. <laughs> I love getting in there and exploring the mind and, and behavior and all that good stuff. So I was teaching and I knew it wasn't quite the right fit. I was uptight, control freak, perfectionist. I'm now in recovery. <laughs> <laughs> so did you ever, cause I actually did a whole episode on a lot of moms who had generalized anxiety before they became a mom and that kind of, you know, they suffered from postpartum depression because of it. Were you, are you someone that struggled with anxiety early on or do you kind of Chronic yeah. depression? Yeah. So yeah. did you have postpartum just out of curiosity at all? <laughs> the funny thing, I felt my best in life when I was pregnant between months three and six. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, that second I trimester was, window. Yeah. I was happy. I was pleasant. I was more relaxed. Um, no, I, it was like anti-depression. Those hormones are months. a crazy thing. Oh yeah. And hormones then are crazy. Yeah, breastfeeding. I felt, I felt great for the most part. Um, but then hormones started to shift and I kind of started to slip back in it. So it wasn't really postpartum. It okay. was, it was just, it just came back. And I remember, um, when I was pregnant with my second, I had just stopped nursing my daughter because I was pregnant and it just wasn't working. Um, yeah. so I went from pregnancy to a year of, of nursing and then pregnant and then I had my second and I was nursing him for two and a half years. So really there was like five, six years of, of all of those hormones. Right. And when yeah. I weaned, yep. it hit me like a brick in the face. It hit me. Hard. Oh, this is what I'm dreading, Allison. This is exactly where I'm in yet. I haven't, slow, I don't know. Support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm so nervous about. I had never had that far of a drop that fast. And it, it was mm. awful. really, really awful. Um, I, I feel for moms who have, who've never, who, who don't have a plan in place, don't have the supports for depression and hit, they have it for the first time during that time. That's so vulnerable. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. you're especially yeah. right too, right in the beginning. Cause I had a couple girlfriends who <clears throat> not to wane off topic too much, but um, they struggled, um, because of latch issues, um, reflux issues and breastfeeding just didn't make sense for them. And because you're a new mom and you're dealing with the newborn, all of that's stressful within and of itself. And then you pull that hormone high, at least that you get from breastfeeding. It's like this really bad, perfect storm that can cause <laughs> a lot of terrible things. Oh yeah. Have it <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And it's, yep. it's getting more recognized, which I'm glad, but we have mm -hmm. a long way to go in supporting moms, especially in those early years. It's tough. So backtracking. Yeah, <laughs> um, I know. I, I knew I wanted to do something different, but I didn't know what. I didn't know how. I wasn't ready to make any kind of a leap. And then my husband had a, a really serious um, medical scare, which we thought he could have died, which I guess he could have during a surgery, but he had a brain tumor. Uh, he's fine now. It wasn't cancerous. And of all the brain tumors, it was the best one to have. Yay. Yeah. Um, I guess. <laughs> that, that, they can say that in a sentence. <laughs> I know, right? I can laugh now, but it, it, it was a blessing in a lot of ways because it caused us to reevaluate a whole lot of things. Yeah. It, it was all about seize the day and gratitude. And so that shifted and it, it gave me another push. And then we're like, you know what? We're not getting any younger. So says our doctor and our mothers. And if we're going to have kids, we need to do it now. So we right. jumped in both feet or whatever body part you want to, <laughs> can I say that on Facebook? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we uh, had two kids right in rapid succession and that gave me a time to stay home and reflect. I'm like, I want to do something else. I don't want to send my kids to daycare. I feel like someone else would be raising them and I want to, which was shocking to me because yeah. Growing up, I was like, I'm never going to be domestic. I'm not going to be a stay at home mom. Like, I'm not going to have kids like that. That'd be awful. It'd hurt. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was oh. just convinced, right. And then things change. Life changes. Right. 
And I think that's important to remember that whatever plan or preconceived (laughs) notions you have about parenting can go out the window and just laugh at them. Yeah, you just kind of laugh at whatever those ideas are because you don't know what's going to be thrown at you and you don't know how you're going to respond. And I think that's a whole realm, too, that moms need to be okay with that. There shouldn't be guilt, vice versa, if you don't want to go back to work or if you're a better version of yourself if you do go when back. you are working, yeah, absolutely. You have to be honest with yourself. And That's going to be a hard thing to do. Oh, absolutely, but it's possible. It takes yeah. it takes practice, um, and it, it, it can take some feedback from an outside source, too, especially if they're more objective than your bestie. To mm-hmm. just, you know what? I, I, I'm not feeling like that's really what you want to do. Are you, are you sure? Like, let's explore that a little bit. Um, and, and just to kind of get in touch with that. Um, so yeah, so while I was on mat leave, I, I was doing a lot of thinking, what do I love to do? What really mm. fuels my soul? What am I passionate about? What am I good at? And what can give me a more flexible work that yeah. you know I can I can be available to my family the way I want and have the lifestyle that I want. Not quite there, <laughs> getting there though. <laughs> but it's it's better than the alternative for sure. Um, so I just one day I was driving down the road and I mean I'd been putting in hours and hours of thinking about this stuff. And I'd been kind of dabbling a little bit in in supporting other parents. And I'd started my own online community kind of selfishly so that I had some support too. And I was trying to find a guru, which I didn't, but I was driving down the road and I was like, life coaching. I've heard of that. I don't know why it popped in my head, but it did. And I thought, huh, that might be kind of neat from what I know of it. I'm going to look into that. So I looked into it and I'm like, oh my gosh, this life coaching thing. How have I not heard more about this? This is perfect for me. And uh, so I tried it out. I had a paid guinea pig. (laughs) She paid me. That's wonderful. I think it was was 30 bucks a session or something. And uh, she had good results. I loved it. And so we went from there and I I pursued my certification and, and it just developed into what I have now. And I love it. Did did it start kind of general that you were more, you know, was it, did you feel yourself naturally coaching from a mom point of view or was it more in general of trying to find you, trying to reestablish your identity or like, what do you want and goal oriented out of life? It was a bit of both. Like I was looking for what kind of profession will meet my needs, my interests, what I'm good at. But it was also, I love to teach and I love seeing the light bulbs. I love that part. And I love being um, a part of that process. And it, it really makes me feel good to see somebody else feeling better. So I knew I wanted to do something helping, right? Yep. And this just kind of matched all the check boxes. So as your life coaching, how does that evolve into parenting coaching? Because that they're kind of one in the same, right? Especially if you're dealing with women, naturally part of their role is parenting and you're probably some of the struggles or hiccups that they're having in life is, you know, around their world of being a mom. And so did it kind of just naturally evolve that you felt you were more helping them in the realm of motherhood? Or did you see that this was more of a niche that you just wanted to start opening up? Uh, Again, both. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You know, so I had this community and I was constantly sharing resources and articles that I found. And oh my gosh, guys, this, this technique, this sounds awesome. I'm going to try it. So my kids were my own guinea pigs for the, for the strategies. Yeah, that's great. That's that's the real life, right? That you're, you're not just bestowing this knowledge, but you're like, Hey, I read this great piece. Let's see what happens together. (laughs) Yeah. That's great. Mommy wants to try something. (laughs) Tried a few on my husband too, you know, whatever. Whatever Um, works. Yeah. So that's kind of the teaching side of things is the strategy part. But I realized through my own journey, how heavy the personal side is of parenting and motherhood and being with children all the time. Yeah. And so much comes up, so much is triggered. 
our own upbringing, our emotions, what we feel and believe about ourselves. It's just like this um, chaos. And it was just like all out there and all jumbled and all a mess. And all I knew was that I felt like crap. Can I say that? Yeah, uh, just, absolutely. Just, you can yeah. because it's it can be crap. Like parenting, <laughs> like some of the things that we're doing can be crap. And like I'll get into <laughs> some things that my husband Lee and I were doing that were like, are we crap parents? Like why it can't oh, yeah. be bad. like why is this not working? Like you just and feel I like figured you're figured out why so much wasn't working. Yeah, and I figured that out. And so that's the that's the personal development side of it is that. It's not just, here's a set of skills, go fix your kid. It's, right. I, I've got some stuff coming up here that I need to look at so that I can use the strategies and they'll work. Because we can tell our kids do X, Y, Z until the cows come home, they say. Yeah. But it's not going to stick if we don't have ourselves in the right frame of mind and the right place and the right intentions and to be modeling what it is we want them to do or be. That's so, so insightful. And it's so hard, right, to sometimes put these great things in practice. And I think mm -hmm. part of what you shared on, Allison, is <clears throat> having that self-awareness piece and thinking about the end goal. Like, what's the end goal of parenting? And I know the moments when I haven't been the best version of myself. It's when I step back and I'm reflected and oftentimes, which is humbling, but it's not my toddler's thing. It's because I was late and not prepared and I'm going into said leaving the house frazzled and then she feeds off of that energy that I'm and, she, and I've noticed because she'll say, mommy, why are you going fast? Because I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like a tornado, I'm a hot mess tornado leaving the house. <laughs> and it's so... It's awful because it's like she's like literally holding up the mirror and I have to stare at myself and say, mm. because I'm a mess today, Autumn. And I have to like just verbally be accountable that I didn't do a great job prepping, did I, Autumn? No, Mommy, you didn't. And you're so right. Like having those moments to own it and figure out like what's happening. And like that's what you're going to help us, I think, unpack today. And part of what we shared in your ebook. Um, if you haven't had a chance, Allison's written this ebook on um, the manifesto of gentle, gentle parenting. And mm -hmm. you kind of coined this philosophy of parenting, right? This approach that you kind of. Sort of. Okay. Well, in my so own mind, I did. <laughs> and this is kind of funny because as I was creating this and going through this process myself and, and sort of creating what I sort of needed. Yeah. Um, and, and couldn't find someone to go first and show me the way. What I realized was there were people out there, a lot of moms, but some dads too, these people out there that were creating almost the exact same thing at the same time. It's like we all just suddenly figured it out. Hmm. I, I just got goosebumps thinking about that. Yeah. Like it's, it's just like this collective cluing in. Or some people say this collective awakening um, depends how woo woo you are on that spectrum, right? <laughs> so we just <laughs> all came to the same conclusions at the same time. And I realized as I was putting this out there into the world, this ebook, this baby I've I've created, yeah. and I was like, oh, they got the same conclusions. Oh, look <laughs> over there, they're using the term gentle. Like it was like, oh, uh, that kind of sucks. And then I was like, no that actually is awesome. Although it still kind of sucks in my head, but <laughs> to be honest, you want, I know. Cause you want to be like the creator. Yeah. You want to own your baby. I totally get yeah, that. Yeah. But nobody can deliver it the way I can. Everybody's right. got kind of the same, their like their own unique way of doing things. Right. So the fact that we were all doing this at the same time, it's a movement. It's a thing. And that was the, and still is an exciting thing to be a part of. So there are people out there doing research on this stuff. And I don't like the, doing the research part, but I love finding out what the conclusions are and putting it into real language. So what, what is that real language? That? Yeah, what is that gentle parenting approach? Like what are, because it's, it's hard to unpack all of it, Allison, it's, right? It's so really about being curious, being okay. detective. What's coming up for me right now? 
um, what is my child needing by engaging in this unhelpful behavior, <laughs> unhelpful yeah. behavior and, and getting curious and, and asking ourselves, asking them, uh, finding a mirror <laughs> to see what's yeah. going on for us, whether it's a person, whether it's, it's our child. Uh, so getting curious and then becoming more aware of how we're showing up, what impact we have on that relationship with our child and focusing on the relationship. It really is all about that. We don't have uh, any hope of guiding our child through life without controlling them unless mm. we have influence. And our influence comes from the relationship that we nurture. Our kids, believe it or not, want to cooperate with us. They are biologically designed to follow our lead. It's all this other stuff up here and in our emotions that gets in the way. Right. So if we can clear out some of that stuff, get really honest with ourselves. Uh, yeah, there's some hard truths that, that yeah. everyone goes through. And we get to a place where, where we can we can access all of those strategies we want to use that are more respectful, uh, more validating, more respectful for us too. Because it's, oh parents, my gosh, we yeah. don't want them to just listen to us because they're afraid of us or afraid of some negative thing happening. We want them to do it because it's right. That it's the right thing to do. So we, how do we do that if, we don't, if we're not forcing them, right? It's relationship. And I think that's key is connecting with your kiddos and coming from a place that you're not controlling. I, I've, so I've been reading a lot of parenting books with our three-year-old because, and I don't want to, you know, label her as a challenging child, but she's, you know, highly emotionally intuitive and um, very receptive to other emotions. She borrows other feelings because she's a very empathetic kid. And, you know, that is a challenge. Be honest. It, it, you can be honest. That is yeah. a challenge. It's, and it can be exhausting, right, to constantly yeah. slow down and to really pinpoint, like, why, like, especially when you're rushed or you just want to go to the doctor's appointment and, you know, she might be yeah. having, like, a moment, whatever, or she's thinking about something from last night that she, like, hasn't let go of. And one of the um, aha moments that I, in reading some of these parenting books, as they talked about this notion of not trying to control your kids, because I think that's a common misconception is I have a good kid because they obey me. And there was an insightful um, piece that if you raise a kid to have this obey, just listen to me authoritative approach to parenting or authoritarian, I mean, when they become teenagers, you're you're kind of raising an insecure kid that requires um, somebody to tell them what to do. And they're more perceptible to um, peer pressure because their whole life they've just waited for a command, waited for um, to be told what to do as opposed right. to trying to guide them. Right. There's one other possibility that happens. And I know you know this one. If the child doesn't internalize that control as being needed, they go the mm -hmm. opposite way and they seek to control. And so they become the rebel. They walk out, they go to the parties. I'll show them. They can't control me. Yeah. And it really depends on the child's temperament. And so That's we such a good point. <laughs> right. We really do need to look at the long-term picture. What what will this particular strategy um, lend in the long term? If if I teach them to obey authority they will obey authority or they'll rebel against right. authority. And neither of those really, if we're really honest with ourselves, we don't want that either. Oh my gosh. I'm so pixelated right now. Do you see in the live feed how I know I'm with everybody. Um, I'm going to show Melissa. She says free spirit. We call our two year old and Melissa is one of, um, you know, she has shared, uh, that with her two-year-old, um, when she's kind of pushing back and she's an uh, independent thinker, that free spirit, mm -hmm. she's found that when she gets down to her level and makes eye contact and connects with her, that's where she has a lot more success. And I found that with my daughter, Autumn, as well. Mm -hmm. I always relate it to adults 
in, in the workplace? Do we want someone who's going to guide and mentor us and say, you know what, this isn't your best work. What do you need in order to improve? How can I help? Would we rather that or someone to say, you idiot, you did it again? Hmm. <laughs> you know, if, right. if we think about how we would want to be treated as an adult and apply that to our kids, we have a lot of our answers for ourselves. We, 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 we really have to change our thinking though, that their feelings, their opinions, their wants and needs are all valid. Maybe they don't have the life right. experience. They're new to this world and, and are, are trying to figure out their place in it and, and how to navigate. So we do need to be a leader and guide them. Um, so I, I find that that concept really helped me shift to thinking about things in a different way. And I well, because you're treating them now as an independent as opposed to this is my kid that just needs to follow my lead, and they're always going to be either, yeah, that extension of me that whatever I'm feeling, thinking that's naturally going to be them. And it's it's an it can be a very unhealthy dynamic when you parent that way forever because you're constantly going to be battling with someone who's trying to claim their identity <laughs> and to seek out well if I'm more like mom or dad will they seem happier and you're going to have a very confused lost kiddo so I think that's key is to be themselves and really trying to identify who that independent kiddo is yeah they they're already their own person as those with spirited kids, as I like to call them, they're already their own person and they tell us. The quieter kids, we have to kind of uh, create that space for them to bring that out, but they, they're already their own people. And the funny thing is, is kind of funny, not funny, is that someday they'll be adults and they'll remember this stuff. They'll, they'll remember how we made right. them feel. And if we, if we think of them as, someone who will sometime be sitting having coffee with us or a beer and and talking with us about their childhood um <laughs> what do we really want to be talking about then sure, sure. what um, melissa writes again that oh my god that's what we always worry about with our five-year-old she needs reassurance and wants to do what you want or makes you happy and we're a little worried she will be easily peer pressured so what do you do with a kiddo like that who's that pleaser all the time you you want to validate them as much as you're validating the strong-willed kids and 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 put the ball in their court what do you need right now well, i don't know what do you want well i'm not sure yet um let's come up with a couple options and and see which we both want so just keep putting it back on them to come up with ideas to answer questions to decide they, they'll get used to it um you can you can, so asking them what they want or what they need, um, making sure that we listen a lot, which can be hard for us. Maybe we're extroverted and our child is an introvert. Uh, <laughs> tough, uh, tough truth number two or one. Uh, we, we have to be quiet and listen. Um, that's around the curious part. We can get to know so much about our kids when we just pause and get curious. I think that's really helpful because I think there's a lot of parents who, when you have that, sometimes that pleaser, it's easy because they just always do the right thing or go with the flow. But I think it's kind of nice that to remember, put it back on them, mm -hmm. right? And to help them own a choice, a decision, an opinion. Yeah. And something, fun, a fun way to do that with the spirited, strong-willed kids or the quiet ones is to play role reversal games. I have a, um, a private membership, which is like a month to month sign up, excuse me. And it's, it's events and content and videos and all kinds of different stuff. But one of the files that I have in there is about power re reversal games. They're not all my games, but I've, I've curated them. I've picked them and brought them in. And those are really fun. Those are things like, um, wh whenever you switch the power dynamic and they're in charge and you play around with that. Um, like trying on that power can be really fun. So letting them chase you and letting them win in a wrestle fight 
or playing the don't you dare game. My kids loved this one. Ooh, what's that? Okay. So (laughs) I would put when, and I could use it anytime, but let's say things are starting to get a little bit heated or you can just feel that resistance coming up at toothbrushing time, for example. Then I put on the silly voice and I go, don't you dare brush those teeth. No, don't you pick up that toothbrush. Don't you, (gasps) you're doing it. No, don't, I told you not to. And you just like get really foolish with it. If you can, some people can't, (laughs) Um, but they love it. And they know that you're kidding. They pick up on that vibe right away and they just eat it up. At least my kids did. And because they think they're being naughty. Yeah. It's like a fun thing. Like, oh, I'm going to do it, mom. What are you going to do? Yeah. And they know that it's play. Yeah. They know that you're trying to get them to do it by being silly, but they play along with it and they have fun. It, it just, it helps us to remember that they're not out to get us. Mm. Just sometimes they want to have a say. They want to, you know, even if, even if their say is to do what we ask them to do, they yeah. want to feel autonomous, you know? They're oh, that's such autonomous. a good... I think that like just hit my heart when you said they're not out to get us because I think too often, Allison, when we're like externally stressed, fill in the blank. Those are, we have tons of stressors in life just by getting up in the morning till we go to bed, like external things happen. And I think sometimes when our kid is trying to practice that independence, we see it as defiance and then that defiance we get frustrated with. And I think it's, key to remember that what are they trying to do? What's the underlying meaning? And what I hear you saying a lot is even in this simple game, right? That role reversal game, it's a moment to connect and be playful with mommy or be playful with daddy. Yeah. They love that. Whenever possible, use humor, use foolishness, use, use laughs, um, make it fun, make it a game. So we've been, we've been told that for so many years that, well, we can't, we can't play games with them forever. They need to know that some things you just have to do and some things aren't fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if they have those early years where chores aren't a big burdensome chore, maybe they'll internalize that it's not a big deal, that it's just something you do and it can be fun. Like, you know, wouldn't wouldn't we rather chat with a friend on the phone while we're doing dishes? That'd be more fun, right? Right. And before you know it, the dishes are done and you didn't have to go, oh, this is awful the whole time you're doing it. Yeah. I feel the same way, right? Like chores don't have to be awful. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they are, but they don't have to be all the time. And and that can be a gift for them to to approach challenge with some laughter and some fun. And they uh, won't you know, when they're, so when they're 20, they're not going to call you up and say, mom, I have to wash the dishes. Can you make it fun? <laughs> <laughs> well, cause you're teaching too. I feel that model behavior. That's so key to how they learn how to handle situations. One of the proudest things that's been happening recently is when my husband and I say we're having like a heated, like, you know, conversation in like the kitchen about like whatever, or um, I'm talking like stress to somebody on the phone. Autumn will come down and say, mom, I, I can tell you're feeling upset. Take my hand. Let's go have a, let's go have a chat. And she's modeling what I do with her or she'll Mommy. say, mom, take ready. One, two, three, calm. Ready? <laughs> and it's and it totally a awesome. like it snaps me out of it because it's so darn cute. And two, it's like yeah, oh my gosh, like you're parenting me like I parent you, like that's awesome. And she's, okay, she's she, you've you've demonstrated how to be a decent human. Yeah, I that good for you. Oh, it's been trust me. There's a lot of moments that aren't good, and you know we're gonna kind of touch base on some. Because we had some people kind of writing in some of their like behavioral questions. Absolutely. And I'd love I, to get to those. I want to, mm-hmm. I'll get to them first. Selfishly, I want to just like unpack all of my like junk on you, but I'll, <laughs> save, I'll save mine to the end. So, and true, if anyone who is watching too, like if you have a question, <clears throat> like write it in the comments and we'll throw it up and Allison will, um, you know, we'll be happy to answer it for you. Yeah, we'll get to as many as we can. And people, you know what? They're welcome to add me as a friend on Facebook. 
um, reach out. We can have a chat. I do uh, free inquiry calls so we can get on the phone and, and see if I've got some ideas for you. Um, I'm open. So. Um, Laura, real quick, right? She can 100% relate to this. She constantly has to remind herself that her independence, so she has a daughter who's two and a half. Oh, and very independence. Oh, very independent to the point, Allison, um, when she's potty training that Laura will go to help her pull up her pants and because she wants to do it herself, even though her pants are already pulled up, she'll pull them down and yeah. pull them back up just so yep. she can do it herself. Yep. I have a client, their daughter's exactly like that. Um, she will get out of the car seat and put herself back in because me do it. Back me on. do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's Absolutely. so funny. So one of fact, is uh, remind me to tell you about my uh, class for parents of spirited kids. Well, let's, we let's go. do, let's do that right now. Let's do oh, that okay, now. Sure. All right. So the 28th or 29th, whichever this Sunday is, uh, that is the 29th. So okay. the 29th of April, I'm doing a live online class. So it'll be similar to this where people can write in their comments and questions. And so I'll be teaching some strategies, kind of like we've had a little bit of teaching in here, but some of it will be more direct and people get a chance to share their, their issues, their challenges, and I'll answer questions on the call too. So it'll be about an hour of mostly content and then we'll have at least a half hour for questions that is only 25 dollars. i know people always want to know about prices uh yeah. 25 dollars for that class it's an hour and a half <clears throat> and uh no special programs that they have to purchase or anything like that to to get on the call and um for any i mentioned my membership before so any of my members get to come for free because we're going to record it and keep it for um, future members or current members to rewatch. That's great. So people don't have to worry about being recorded because the names are that the chat window won't record. So it's still anonymous. Nice. <laughs> so and let, there might be a few of my members that want to come on and, you know, be, be on there and have conversation and that's fine. But, um, yeah, I just want to make sure that people know it will be recorded. <laughs> Laura's in. Awesome. She loves it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's kind of a nice piece, too, is that um, anonymity. Because sometimes you don't want to have your name attached. Like, you just kind of, yeah, because it, it it's a world of vulnerability. And, you know, I think sometimes, too, there's that fear of judgment. Because, sadly, yeah. there are, um, you do can feel judged by some people yeah. like and we're we feeling off of that you don't need that yeah. from parenting support system yeah <laughs> amen so one of um janelle she actually um typed in janelle has an elementary age boy and i can relate to this and i think a lot of parents can my daughter it's that picky eater stage where i have my five foods that i like to eat and meals can feel um, defiant and uh, they they're picking and you know you you don't want to feel like a short order cook and no. there's this I think there's this realm it's so broad that you have one extreme where this is what you eat and if you don't eat that then you're punished and go to bed and then you have people that are food experts that say that causes issues that's no. not what we're going to answer get into but what is your approach that when you have a kid that's being picky about food or they only want those couple of things, what's a, a gentle parenting approach to handle that appropriately? It, it depends on, on what's going on. So any specific situation I'd need to go more in depth with, for example, if it's a sensory issue and there's mm. certain textures that they just, they can't, they have to spit out or the gag, um, that's a separate issue. And I would go, probably the occupational therapy route and yeah. look into sensory processing. Um, there, there are books on that. I can give people a link to a good book if, if they want that later. Um, yeah. So go a book online, whatever. <clears throat> so you definitely want to address that because the solutions will be different. If it, if the parent really feels like it's a defiance issue, then what we have to look at is the need. <clears throat> so children need to feel they have some say in their world. 
They may not be able to choose what clothing is bought. They may not be able to choose where they go and when, but they can choose if they sleep, if they eat, what they eat, how much they eat, and they can choose about toileting, whether or not. <laughs> yeah. So, so we can literally put them on the seat. They control whether they go or not. So <clears throat> sometimes when we see issues with one of those three things, it's related to uh, needing to feel more autonomy and more control in their life. So it doesn't mean that we need to let them have all the say. We need to find areas where it is negotiable, that we mm -hmm. can drop the rope a little bit, release the reins and let them have more say. That is one of the biggest ways to combat the, defi the defiance around eating is to give them say somewhere else. <clears throat> I love the Ellen Satter Institute, Ellen with a Y, E-L-L-Y-N, Satter, okay. T-T-E-R Institute. People can Google that. There are lots of ideas there. But the primary idea is that we provide the what and the when of food. So we provide what foods, we provide when the meals are. The children get to decide if and how much. So there are certain things that are the parents in the parents realm of decision making. There are certain things that are in the child's realm of decision making. And I am by no means an expert in this. I just kind of have the right. basic concept, but we don't, we don't decide how much of something they're going to eat. We don't dangle the dessert carrot. Yeah. <laughs> kind of as an oxymoron, but we don't <laughs> dangle it as a reward. We don't use food yeah. as a reward or a punishment. And we don't, we don't, uh, withhold all of those sort of forbidden foods because then it becomes a power play. I'm going to sneak the forbidden foods or I'm going to eat more of that or I'm not going to eat so I can get that. You know, it just, it gets messy. So <clears throat> we, but part of our job is to provide healthy foods, but include at least one, I think it's one, maybe two foods that we know they like. And if we provide okay. uh, dishes of the food where they can serve themselves, we've got a better chance of them eating more variety and more of it. One thing I do is if I feel the kids are starting to get hangry, they're hungry and they're getting really antsy and angry, I'll put out a plate, one plate with a variety of vegetables on it. And before I know it, that thing is cleaned up. And wow. if I had said, here, honey, here's your plate of vegetables. Nope. I don't like carrots. I don't like cucumber. I'm not eating peppers. Those are gross. If I put it on a plate and they could serve themselves, they eat it all and they love it. Um, it's funny. That's so interesting. So, so letting them serve themselves, go shopping with you, plan meals with you, or plan what new vegetable are we going to try this week? Sometimes those sorts of strategies help. You're a breath of fresh air, girlfriend. <laughs> this is so helpful. This is so helpful. You should tell my kids that. They don't realize I'm an expert. They should listen to me. <laughs> you should. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. Um, I was talking recently to somebody that no matter what, who you are to your kids, whether you're Beyonce or... Um, Amanda here at Mom Simply, you're you're annoying and an embarrassment to your children, <laughs> regardless of who you are. Yeah, I love to sing. I think I'm an okay singer. At least I used to be when I was allowed. But now that my kids are getting older, like they will cover their ears, they will run away. So I use it. I'm like, um, time to get up. Mama's gonna start singing the morning song, and they're like, No, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. But they know we're just messing. I'm not literally confused. oh for sure i'm for just sure. using what i got <laughs> we have actually um one of my close friends her sister just had a move and she's um she writes in a question her sister katie moved states and her sensitive four and a half year old is struggling with the transition oh, acting out of character um just any advice to help handle this transition on top of you know as a parent you're stressed because <laughs> you're starting a new job you're unpacking so 
I guess kind of both, like what's a strategy for the mama bear and then how to help a sensitive kid when they're struggling with the change. Lots of compassion and lots of TLC. You want to give them the time and space to share what they're feeling, help them name those feelings, uh, maybe share a time that you felt uh, alone or worried or whatever feeling you think that they're feeling at that moment and say, you know, this, this is what happened to me once and I felt worried. Is that maybe how you're feeling? And they can confirm or deny if that's what they're feeling. So we don't want to put the words in their mouths unless they're really young and they're just starting to learn what emotions are. Uh, even then they can tell us when, when, when we are wrong. Um, but just giving them that time to talk about it and not try to fix things, just mm. let it out. And just that, that helps them to feel heard and validated rather than mom and dad have all the answers. Right. We want them to feel like they can come up with some too. Ask them, how do you feel about that? Uh, what's going on for you right now? Uh, you, you don't seem to be acting yourself. Tell me more. And just inviting those conversations. We don't want to force it. Like you really need to talk to me. You haven't talked to me. I know you're upset. What's it about? (laughs) Okay, lady, (laughs) back (laughs) off. (laughs) We want to, we want to extend the invitation and, uh, encourage them to talk. Sure. You know, it might help if you talk about that, but then let it, let that be and let them come to you. Lots what about TLC too and snuggles? What about for the mom? Um, when you're, cause I know you've done, you know, parenting coaching too. When you're a mom stressed about work, what are some good connecting, I guess, family moments? Because I think when I know for me um, that need to nest, to get your house set up right away, to, try to be excelling at your new job when it was a promotion, you know, there's a need to wanting to be great at a lot of things that, um, how can she help balance that, you know, creating that, those good family moments still, what are some ways to kind of prioritize that? Yeah. Um, as you were talking, um, I I do swear a little bit sometimes, (laughs) but I'm going to keep this one in, let that stuff go. Like if you've got this, this, this vision of how this perfect is going to perfectly roll out. Got to let it go. Um, Find a way to validate how much you want it. Sure. And how important it is to you, but not hold yourself to reaching that standard. I like to use standards as um, motivation and as a guide. If it feels heavy, you're not doing it right. I don't usually tell people they're doing things wrong, but in that case I do. Yeah. (laughs) Um, You know, you can have it as a guidepost, as something to strive for, but don't expect yourself to reach perfection. That's just setting yourself up to feel like crap again. Right. We got enough enough of that. So girlfriend, let that, you know what, go. Um, But also make sure that you're filling your own cup because Mm. it's hard on us too. Absolutely. So, if our cup, if you can see that, if you, our cup is this big and we're operating down here, how can we expect to help our kids with their stuff? We have to make sure that we've filled our cup up enough to then have the energy and the, the support for them. It's like putting on your own mask first, right? And we as moms are so driven and we want to support everyone else, check in with everybody else, keep things rolling and going and juggle all of these balls. But we can't do that if we're not, uh, you know, in our peak Olympic emotional form. <laughs> yes. I think I literally did um, a live feed physically, like showing coffee as a visual, Allison, but of this same type of concept that you need to fill your mama cup and how important it is to pour into yourself so that you can pour into other people. Because if you're pouring from an empty cup, you're, you're going to snap somewhere. Yeah. Things are, things are going to get really messy. Because it is true. I see it time and time again. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Yeah. <laughs> amen. Stressed, guess what? Everyone's going to feel it because we're, don't tell the guys this, but we're kind of the hub. Yeah, Yeah, we're we're, for the most part, 
women are really good at that. Maybe it's because we're designed that way. Maybe because we're raised to do that. I don't know, but we feel good when it's like a well-oiled machine and we have to, we have to get buy-in from other people and help them understand how important it is for them to love on us and fill our cup too. And, and don't hesitate to let the people in your family know, you know what? I, I want to be the best mom I can be. And part of that is going out every Saturday night with my girls. (laughs) So you might not get to bed early enough because you're missing mom. I get it, but you'll be okay. We'll get through this. Here's some strategies. I'm going to go now. That's such a good road. So many moms need to remember that because I think, and I struggle with this, that everything's going to fall apart if I abandon ship or heaven forbid I do something for myself. And And it might, let's be honest. (laughs) Yeah. You know, your baby might, might be a little bit loud or, I mean, you got to find the balance too, right? I mean, if they're really Mm -hmm. young, maybe that's not the time. Maybe you want to do it Saturday afternoon, but you know, they're going to learn to be okay without you, but they'll definitely be glad to see you when you come back. And just, just remember how happy are you to see those little darlings when you do yes. come back? And I, You're I depriving saw something. them of that by <laughs> staying home all the time. <laughs> I read something recently that um, you need a reason to miss them sometimes. Yeah. You know, and having that break to miss them and to have that, re, you know, be reunited and that feeling that you get from being reunited. Yeah. Make them miss you a little. Yeah. And I sometimes want- our partners need need a little, um, a little dose of reality, too. Doing bedtime. Need you say no more. <laughs> I And I will deny it. If you tell them I said that, I will deny it. But, oh, yeah, yeah you, we, no one will be throwing you under the bus. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's mom simply for a reason. A lot of females watch this, so girl power. Yeah. yeah. I have a question um, that we've been struggling with, Allison, and I feel that some of the strategies we've been doing in our own home haven't been working. And so I stay home, and my husband Lee um, goes to work. And I don't know if it's because I'm home. Um, I've heard reverse from friends. Either they gravitate toward, their kids gravitate toward dad because he's been gone or vice versa. And we're in the realm of, I only want mommy. Mommy can do that, not you, daddy. And I have a sensitive husband and he, you know, and it's justified. Like his feelings get hurt and trying to navigate my feelings are hurt. I want to connect with my kid, but my kid doesn't want to connect with me. She just, can I, can I just stop you right there? Yeah. Before you go on. Um, and I I want to address this because moms often take this on and we need to stop this. (laughs) Him having his feelings hurt is his business. That's his to deal with. That is not our stuff. Yeah. And do not take that on. You've got enough to take on. We have it's to. It's so hard to do, though, because you feel like as a. It gets easier. And yeah. then it's liberating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, he's he's got to he's got to be the kind of person who's willing to eventually own that and eventually see that that is his stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. I, I don't want any any moms in a in kind of a an unsafe situation to do that and say, oh, that's yours to deal with. You know, I, I don't want anything to happen that way, but um test the waters yeah. and, and work toward that. You might not want to jump right in, depending right. on your relationship. Yeah. But eventually that's a nice place to get to. And we don't want to put that burden on our kids either. That, oh, you hurt daddy's feelings. You're in charge of daddy's feelings, especially our girls, because that sends, mm. a, sends a wrong message. Yeah. Boys can actually handle their emotions, and we need to we need to hold them accountable for that. That's it's not our job so to hold them accountable, but unfortunately, we kind of have to right now. And, and I think it's a disservice to the men to, yeah. to, to model their, their poor sensitive feelings. They can They can learn to handle it. We'll support them. So then I think this is what we're doing wrong too. And what I've been trying to navigate, like if he'll go to leave for work by, um, can I have a kiss? I'm going to go to work. I love you. No, dad, I don't want to kiss. And it's this fight. Well, I'm leaving. I want, I would like a, you know, a kiss goodbye and a hug. And when she's saying no, I feel, you know, well, sometimes like 
Adam, come on, daddy's leaving. Like you need to. And now with you saying that, I'm like, freaking great. Is she going to be like susceptible to, you know, abuse someday? But I think that's important to recognize. Like you don't it's need the to. the beginning of understanding consent. Yeah. It's her body yeah. and her choice. You can always say, it, we, we know there there is a social expectation to acknowledge when someone comes and someone goes. Yeah. But does it have to be the way we think we want it? Mm. Can it be a high five? Can it be a see you later, daddy, or an I love you? Um, we want to give them the autonomy to decide. Yeah. Um, but but we can still honor honor the the relationship by saying, I don't want to give you a kiss right now. I'll give you a high five, but later, later I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's really, really helpful. Good. And I think, I think too, I want to validate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think you nailed it on the head too. It's him owning, um, because there's sometimes when I go to leave, um, you know, she's in the middle of something. I don't have her stop and do it because she's in the middle of something and I'm, I'm really receptive of her. She's a moody kid. So she's either like huggy kissy or when she wants her space, she wants her <laughs> space. And you just write and you don't take it personal, but you just walk away and kind of leave it. And because you you've got the emotional intelligence to realize that that's not about you. You're OK. Right. You right. know she loves you. So it's all right. I'll get one later. Yeah. She's been Thank like you. That's really, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's so, I call her our sour patch kid because she's either really like, ah, like once and she'll, and she's really good though, Allison, at verbalizing it and kind of saying, wow, I, awesome. I need my, I need my space right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to not be, yeah, it's really, I think helping him navigate, like just don't take it personal. Like that's yeah. just, you got to recognize that she wants her space. Yeah. You want your space sometimes, <laughs> right? And everybody does. Yeah. You you might want to help him navigate his emotions separately from your daughter. Maybe yeah. you can practice with you and you say, no, honey, I don't want to be touched right now. Yeah. You need to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> I it's so you, true. But don't put that on me. <laughs> yeah. That's such a good point. That's so great. Well, I'm um before we sign off, I just want you to kind of share your um the classes and um some of the sure. I guess rooms that you um or platforms that you offer for moms who kind of want to delve into this a little bit more. Absolutely. Uh so I do work one-on-one -on -one with families, couples, um the one, even uh one parent one-on-one. -on -one. Um, either for life coaching, if they just kind of want to explore some of their stuff that comes up for them, um, whether it's work, whether it's relationship, parenting, whatever. Uh, but I do, I do have coaching programs for parents too. Um, I, I, I love doing both. Um, yeah. So the the parent coaching programs, I do have a VIP one, which is basically me on speed dial. You have a private messenger app. Um, with me and you can send me a message at 2 a.m. You can send it at noon. We can hop on the call sometime on a call and, and figure out some stuff. So I'm really available for however much support someone wants or needs. And I only take a couple people for that so that I am very available to them. They also get all of my videos and group coaching calls. They have access to pretty much everything that I have and as many private sessions um, online as they want. So um, that one is a 12 week program. And again, as many sessions as they want. I also have a six week program, which includes my online content and my group calls. Plus there are every two weeks, there are one-to-one -one calls with me and we go through exactly what it is that they wanna work on. So they've got videos to learn the strategies and the content. And then we talk about the implementation for their specific uh. situation. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. Well, it's kind of probably more fun for me than them because it's, it is hard work. <laughs> oh, I bet. Look, at, look at our own stuff. Right. Uh, but it, it gives them a really good foundation to get started with changing the way that they're parenting. It won't fix everything, but it will give them the tools and the language to approach most situations at, at least the beginning parts of it to try to explore what it is that they need. Um, 
a lot of people will then after a coaching program, they'll switch into my online membership in the online membership, which all my coaching programs include, except the life coaching program. Um, there are 24, 25 recorded videos and each one is at least 30 minutes, some are even an hour. So all kinds of different topics, um, co-parenting with a spouse or with an ex, mm. um, keeping calm, getting calm, helping your child stay calm. <laughs> uh, we're doing that class is going to be recorded. So we'll have the one for spirited kids, all kinds of different topics, um, how to set limits with empathy. So, mm. you know, holding that space for them to be upset about the limit that you've set, but you're still setting the limit. <laughs> right. You do that. Right. Uh, so all kinds of content, there are uh, PDFs, we have minimum of three group calls a month, and those are uh, group coaching. Okay. So we'll talk through a scenario that someone brings up. If they want some coaching on what comes up for them and what's going on personally, we can do that, or they can just get the specific strategies if they want to just keep it a little more superficial uh, right. without diving too deep. And they can bring all of their questions and we get to as many as we can within the hour. That's so helpful. And I think a lot of these, depending on how, um, how deep people want to attack this or how generalized, if they kind of just want to taste yeah. that group that mentality. Place, right? Exactly. And, and you're right. child is different. Yeah. And it's that level of being comfortable with how much you want to convey and how much you, because it, Sometimes starting at least broad can help you slowly then zero into where maybe one of the issues is that yeah. it's underlying. Maybe you get more comfortable trying with membership for a little while, and then maybe you want to go a little more in depth and, and do some coaching, which just happened as well. People have gone the other direction too. And then some, they just, uh, they're pretty conscious and self-aware already and you know their relationships going well they they're just kind of stuck on an issue or two and and want some support so they'll come in and stay for a few months sometimes people will go and then they'll come back um so that i would recommend for anybody to explore that at least and see see if there's a fit there for them i can i can give you the link for that if i haven't already and yeah that's great the, the, the information page on that um, well, Allison, I'm not to put you on the spot, but I would love to have you back on down the road. This is yeah. so wonderful. You're a wealth of knowledge and um, just helping remind us that um, a lot of the times when we're struggling with something, um, taking that step back and remembering that our kids want to make us happy and they want it. They, at the end of the day, they want to have a relationship with us and when we take those moments to step back and recognize and own what, where we're accountable for, where our partner's accountable for, and helping meet the needs that maybe aren't being met by our kiddos can really help solve a lot of these issues. Absolutely. You're wonderful. I hope you have a good week and that you get good weather your way soon. We're supposed <laughs> so to have sunshine soon. next week. So soon, yeah. Spring is gonna arrive soon. Someday. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, you're great hostess and your, oh, your group is fantastic. So I, I know that you're supporting moms at a time that they really need it. And, and I was uh, very happy to come on today. Thanks so much. Have a great week, Allison. You too. Bye. Bye.